Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has a well-documented history around 2,500 years back and unbroken record for even uh, events to today. Great Chronicle Mahavamsa and its extended Chronicle Tulvamsa etc. It covers from 6th century BC to 19th century AD. Now, according to Mahavamsa, the Great Chronicle to of Sri Lanka, the preparation for the foundation for the stupa is described in follows chapter 24 verses 217. Now, in Sri Lanka, we have two terminologies. Uh, this huge monuments that is uh, we call Bhagab. The initially 3rd century BC, uh, we got that technology from India, that is stupa. Now, Dagaba concept is built by Sri Lankans. Now, here, the eye bubbling, uh, the, some information you can have about this foundation of the Ruanvali site. That is the built in 2nd century BC by great king Dutugam. Dagaba, this is Dagaba concept, huge edifice. Now, this foundation was 17.5 uh, feet depth. So there are three metal layers. If I, if I go through this uh, lowest layer, that is the eight-inch iron layer you have, and middle metal layer eight inches copper, and top metal layer seven inches silver. In between, they uh, make that uh, compress butter clay and some earth mix layers. Now, if it's so. Now, this is not, uh, you know, that uh, revealed by the Sri Lankan archaeologists, but the concept, upon this concept, this should be the world, the oldest capacitor. So this is the way we have the capacitors. Now, here you can have the styles of the modern Ronisaya in the Dagaba people in your left side. When you come to this right side, that is the ancient, the structure, or we can say the style of the ancient one inside, Dagaba. So you can see there's a huge difference, the top of the Dagaba. There you can have the upper stone, we call in singular term, upper, gala, and chatra. Chatra is like an umbrella. Now you can see that uh, dome. Uh, why these uh, people make like that? This is, we know that this is the Sri Lankan Buddhist uh, culture, it's a uh, sacred place. So I'm also Buddhist. But if, why, if we looking in different angle, this give more information. Now this is the present look, how it's looked like. Now they are the residence place of the uh, priest or the monks, the one will say, the Dagaba, you can have this uh, pond. It's named as key pond. So why they put as a key pond? Now, if I keep your attention in there's a one uh, place, that's a drainage system from the one side Dagaba area. So this is, uh, you have to think again, and the way we use this, water management, it's not like what we are seeing and what we have that information, what we reveal so far, it's totally different. Now, other than that, the Buddhist culture, if you go to this uh, Hinduism, you know that Gopuram, the structure of the temple, Kovil, the top of the Kovil you have that, we call this a Gopuram, the top of the Kovil, Gopuram you have the Kalasam, the Kalasam is made by the brass. So there is a tradition, there was a tradition and belief. The ancient people, they put seeds inside of this Kalasam and keep. Now you can see in this structure, inside of this structure, the lingam, the followers, in the followers, they're always making some pour into this uh, lingam by milk, herbs, 
water soluble liquids and they drink and rest of the thing they wash and they drain to this uh, cultivation area if you go to this uh, right side of this slide you can see the mount of god shiva god nandi the bull you know this uh, agriculture sector the bull is the we call fertilizer if more fertilizer to this uh, nature now this is the again you can have the layout map of the ancient city of sri lanka there is a first kingdom of sri lanka angadapura now this is center city you can see the center is the city of ancient city and around that city you have the stoop and dagab and again it has a three layers so there are the some tanks human made tanks also there so why these people make this arrangement why did our ancestors do like this is there any reliable reason behind it was it an ancient nature related technology how can we justify it yes <clears throat> uh, this is basically the research done by the three scholars geomagnetic field variations at the equatorial electrojet station in sri lanka here now <clears throat> i would like to explain a little bit about this electrojet in the earth the atmosphere consists of the ionosphere they are in the daytime this ionosphere is uh, splitting into four layers d layer is the lowest one and the e layer f1 and f2 layers the density of the ions ions will be higher in the daytime when when it come to night time what happen it will contract can go up so only we have a t d and e layer now here they have done this uh, research based on the peradenia one spot now i would like to orientate you you can see the blue color spot trivandrum in india and this indian trivandrum is very close to this zero that is the magnetic equator this magnetic equator is here and that's moving and when you come to this red spot that's a peradenium so what they did they measured this uh, magnetic field here h is a horizontal component and here you have the z is the vertical component we call dip vertically you can have this grass will change you have in the peradenium this is located south of the magnetic equator i am talking about magnetic equator it's very important you can have this is happening for noon the morning time so this is because of the now you can see if it is magnetic depth is increases induced current which is produced through this ionosphere will increase now it goes to according to this uh, statistics and you can have this uh, research in the uh, internet google you can google you can have this this induced current goes to 600 kilometers how might this unique resource be put into good use of the current state of sri lanka is very important so there this uh, gentleman dr yanik van doren he is an engineer in agriculture and biotechnology and has more than 15 years of experience and know how about the applications of the electroculture and the influence of the electromagnetism on plant growth and development water and soil fertility so i google because i went through this all this uh, research papers i found this gentleman and i request to the email to response me today he is going to give very important lecture and practically how you can build up this concept in sri lanka 
So I am not going to waste your time. And meantime, I would like to mention uh, this session is streaming on YouTube as well. So if anyone who wants to participate, you can inform them uh, and send them this link as well. So Dr. Yanix, I would like to hand over to you. So th thank you, Harisha, Harsha. Um, do you hear me? Everything okay? Yes. <laughs> So uh, thank okay. you to all for listening. Thank you to invite me uh, to do this presentation. And I hope it will be very interesting for all of us um, to uh, just uh, to discover already new techniques that maybe you don't know about, um, about electroculture. So it's a whole new world uh, of applications for agriculture that can be very interesting in your country and uh, in, in, in every country in reality.